Hello. Welcome to Law Master's Lair. I'm your Law Master, here today for this year's first guide video. This week's video is actually a pair with next week's video, but one video at a time. So today, we talk about the great platinum dragon, or silver dragon himself, the greatest of the metallic dragons, Pathfinder is not Bahamut, Apsu. Let's get started. And where can you find information on Apsu? As always, Gods of Magic, one for both editions, is the first, first place you are going to want to look. Though there is a new book coming later this year, which is going to also be a third starting point. Look at me. Are you planning for the 2024 Arata video? No write-ups in back matter for him, so the first full information on the Dragon God was in the book Inner Sea Faiths. We have some more in the book Faiths of Purity, though the minor gods only get a little bit in that book. And Plain Adventures gives a good look at his domain. Finally, Side tangents come from Planes of Power, Kadira, The Morning Expanse, Rage of Elements, and Tian Shi. At the beginning of time, there were two waters, one fresh and one salt. These became Apsu and Tiamat. Between them, they gave birth in, to several draconic deities, who are said to have created the multiverse. However, the oldest, the hawk, reveled in destruction and killed his siblings one by one, their shattered remains giving birth to the five metallic dragons. Apsu hunted down his own son, but a mother's love knows no limit, and she offered dragon kind who participate in the hunt, to be healed from near death that they were currently in, if they protected her son. But those who accepted this vast betrayal became the first chromatic dragons. Which starts us with our first side tangent, the part of the show where we look at the lore, even if it no longer exists. Okay? Tiamat. Of course, Tiamat is one of the most well-known evil gods in Dungeons and & Dragons. And while referenced early in Pathfinder's life, all mention of her has slowly been scrubbed from any official lore. However, named or not, she was the salt water to Apsu's fresh, the chaos to his order. The two gave birth to six dragon gods, known as the Beautiful Metals, but the eldest, the Hawk, killed his siblings. And not even this was enough to crush her mother's love and she protected the hawk from Apsu, allowing the fight to be postponed for another time. Part of the reason Galarian ha was chosen as the place for the final battle between Apsu and the hawk is that the planet has little influence from Tiamat, so she will not be able to intervene again when the time comes. Apsu, of course, takes the appearance of a large dragon, making all great worms look small in comparison. His coloration has alternately been described as platinum and as silver, the latter likely to make attempts to draw lines between him and a certain Dungeons and Dragons draconic deity. After his battle with his son, where the hawk managed to escape, Apsu has been building up forces for the future war, a war that both sides have decided would end on the planet of Galarian. Apsu continues to recruit from both dragons and mortals for the upcoming war against his son, slowly working to build a force which would allow victory for the forces of good, and hopefully as little destruction as possible. Apsu getting more followers is secondary letting the people know about the final battle with the hawk, and gaining allies. Though, of course, some of these allies begin worshipping to the father of dragon's name. 
The main first followers are those known as the Platinum Band, who all have two bases of operation, one in Apara and one in Absalom. They are mostly humans or humanoids who wish to take part in the final battle to increase the sub survivability of their home. Bronze dragons often act as messengers to Apsu, which some claim is because humanity cannot handle the god's true form. Many dragons worship him, the most common being bronze, gold, and some brass, though even some chromatic praise his name. The one that does the least so is black. There is also a decent following of Apsu among the dragon kin of Traxius and the Dragonic Dragon Legion, but we are not talking about them this week. Which, speaking of bronze dragons, let's take a look at side tangent number two, the Sisters of Bronze. This organization is centered within the Kadiran city of Ushmogal, a city with few gods, but is strangely safe. It is not known how they maintain the influence they do, but some say it is because they are an organization of bronze dragons, working in secret. Though, that's a secret we might never know. The main duty of the priests of Apsu is to travel the world, spreading word of their god's mission and the battle to come. This means daily routines found in Edo priesthoods are virtually non-existent here. They follow leads of actions to the cultists of the hawk and forge more alliances with groups, so that even if they do not worship Apsu, they still will stand by his side in the final battle. They also take the time to build defenses to towns and armies to ensure all are ready. Despite his best efforts, it's devoted to Apsu are still rare, mostly practiced by soul dragons or bands of humans. Most use gold or platinum implements for their ceremonies, with a polished mirror sitting in the center of each. Outside of this, there is little shrines have in common. Temples are rarer, and much more often found in his home demiplane, where they rest on floating islands of silver, gold, and platinum. Apsu's domain is a demiplane known as the Immortal Abloratory. It wanders the great beyond, mostly through the astral plane, and can have portals opened to the material plane. It is made up of various islands which serve as homes to temples, or as the dragons who Apsu allows to live in his realm mostly as mates, of course, with at least one of each kind of metallic dragon present. It also contains the mirrored anvil, an item said to be able to smash the legendary items known as the orbs of dragon kind. So, now time for a third side tangent. It's a del This castle sits on the border between the plane of air and of water. Or at least it did. Do not see much about it in Rage of the Elements, so do not know how the plane of wood changed it. Either way, the castle is protected by silver dragons and under constant attack from white dragons. This location is sacred to Apsu and contains many of his artifacts, with some whispering it also contains the legendary Shosh Tyeld, which grants control of all dragons. So it's time for information on our deity, general information on our deity. The center of worship, as mentioned earlier, are Absalom, Taldor, and Traxius. When their plan is listed as a center of, for your worship, you know you need more worshippers. Apsu has two holidays, the Day of Remembrance, which is the first day of winter, where he and his followers reflect on the changes of the universe since its beginning, and the Wanderer's Escape, the first day of summer, 
where Oxford's worshippers travel to find new places they can set up defenses from the upcoming conflict. Oxford's holy text is the Draconic Opsu, written by a golden dragon who once worshipped Opsu, but is now atheist and blind. It tells both the origin of dragonkind and the Bates various topics, showing what is good and what is evil. For allies, the Blameless Flame is a kotal which is wrapped in the flames of golden dragon's breath. He travels the material plane, running away the teachings of the hawk wherever they are found. Cyrex, the Platinum, is a clockwork dragon, once made by Taslan using the mind of a bronze. Now even able to, unable to return to his former form, she still serves as a god's emissary. His herald, Aurelianus, is a massive silver dragon wearing equally as massive glasses. He travels the material plane, helping mortals create defenses against evil dragons. As for other gods, Apsu gets along with any good deity, especially Iomede. For evil, Apsu is the only one to come to offer aid. As Mohius is the only one to come to Apsu to offer aid. So Apsu has rejected the devil thus far. His main concern is his approaching war with his son the hawk, all actions taken approaching that one moment. Now before we end off, we have one more side tangent to look at, a list of iconic deities, Apsu, the hawk, Tiamat, and the five other dra dead dragon gods were briefly talked about, but we still have plenty of dragons which did not come from uh, up or are connected to chromatic or metallic dragons. For primal dragons, the sole one we know of so far is Uvuko, the cloud dragon worshipped in the Morgni Expanse. His followers are found among the lizard folk and dwarves of the Expanse, as well as all who love the change that comes from travel. In Tianxi, we have three imperial dragons, Shizuru herself, who we'll be talking about later this year, her brother the Black Damio, and the deity of natural disasters, Lady Nabiu. Finally, one more imperial dragon, we have Shum Shumunu, found in range of elements. Elemental Lord of Wood, he originates as a forest dragon from Galorian before she took the position as Kalba. I think I said he before. She took the position as Kalba. Cannot wait to see what more draconic deities we come across as we explore more of Galorian and beyond. And that brings me to the end of today's video. But I promise two parts. Next week we will continue the dragon theme by taking a look at Traxius. See you then.